Well, it's been a few months since uh, I've been to site and it's good to see it progressing really, really well. Uh, it's always an exciting part of the project when you see something you've designed and developed and calculated and analysed come to fruition and appear in real life. My thoughts really now about the project, um, you know, it's great to see something from paper represent itself in real life. We started over a year ago uh, with the original concept of how the factory could work uh, as a living, breathing space, how we could make the manufacturing process interact with the building, how we could recover energy and how we could do things in a passive way uh, to make it slightly more intelligent, make the building work for us and also start to share the energy that's uh, consumed and, uh, and dissipated in the factory in the office space. So try and get some proper recycling of energy going. It's looking exciting. Okay, um, I just appreciate we're on a, a working site. Uh, the building still isn't completely finished, but um, it's getting near that way. And I wanted to take a bit of time to explain very simplistically the, the ventilation principle in the factory. Um, rather than adopt um, a high energy use uh, ventilation system with lots of fans and lots of ductwork and uh, something that needs a lot of electricity to drive it, we've adopted a very passive, a very natural ventilation solution. The natural ventilation itself needs, still needs some control. So as you'll see on the perimeter of the building here, We've got a series of uh, louvers, dampers which are able to be opened or closed by very simple motors. Uh, and these motors are controlled on temperature and internal air quality. They are linked from a control point of view to these big boxes here. There are penetrations in the ceiling, in the roof, um, which are on top of them mounted um, Wind, what we call wind catchers, uh, which are basically a turret that allows air to leave the building or to enter the building depending on wind movement and air pressure. So, uh, the whole control system starts with this uh, a very unassuming white box just like this. Uh, not dissimilar to the thermostat you've got in your own home. Uh, and what this does is sense the air temperature in the factory. Let's just take a, a summer's day scenario. Um, it's very warm in the factory, the sun's beating down on the outside of the building, it's getting warm, the factory's in full production. What happens next? The sensor on the wall tells the brain, I'm getting warm. Once that sensor hits a certain temperature, it then starts to open the dampers, the valves, the dampers in our roof ventilators, which allows warm air to leave the building. Now, warm air leaving a building can't just leave the building without fresh air coming in. So at the same time, the brain tells the dampers in the walls to modulate open slightly and that creates an air movement in the space which keeps the temperature within a certain position. So we talked about the ventilation principles for the factory uh, and what I want to do is just maybe show you some images that'll help perhaps understand what I've just been talking about. The age-old principle uh, is based on something that's been around for many, many thousands of years, which is the Iranian wind catcher, um, which has been developed empirically over time that, uh, that really um, utilised air movement across them to create a positive pressure on one side and a negative pressure on the other. So air entered the building, 
through these, uh, these very elaborate wind towers, uh, pushed into the building and were drawn back out as the air, as the wind moved over them. Now, air can't enter a space without leaving a space. It has to have a way out, otherwise you just have to push the doors out and other things cause problems. So this wind catcher idea has been taken a stage further. It's a fan without any electricity, pushing air in the building. Now, we've got 40 of these on the roof of the factory. And they all operate dynamically, so they're controlled, so that each one talks to each other, so there's never too much ventilation or too little ventilation in the space. Obviously, this doesn't heat the building. This is only to provide ventilation, fresh air movement, uh, air for the process, air for the occupants in the building, and also to relieve high temperatures in summer. In winter, to recover the energy. Uh, as you know, we've pointed out outside, we've got uh, and the injection molding process, which is part of Mike's manufacturing, the heart and soul of Mike's manufacturing process, gives off a lot of heat. You have to heat the, uh, the plastic beads up to melt them to form the boxes. That heating up process then has to be cooled, and we have to cool these plates down that we injection mold these boxes into. And that cooling process on the injection molding pl uh, plates, we then recover the energy from that what we're doing is picking up the, the heat energy from those injection moulding machines and using it to heat the offices we're stood in here now and the future butterfly when that's constructed. Mm -hmm.